Good evening, we're back with more Lord of the Rings LCG, and tonight is the Drowned Ruins on Nightmare Difficulty. We've got a special deck of locations for this one, and we've got to start with two in the staging area. They're double-sided locations to start with grotto side face up. And we gain control of Captain Sahir and Naasiya. Well, the active location is underwater and counter card effects cannot be cancelled and a special effect for 2A. Which isn't going to impact a solo game. While an underwater location is the active location, players cannot play attachments or allies. Okay. As always, looking for Steward of Gondor in the opening hand. What do these do? After the players explore Cursed Caverns. After you travel to Waterlogged Hall. Okay. So we need three underwater locations in the victory display. Let's get started. Got a Captain's Wisdom, and we can play two Warriors of Lasernach and an Ether Swordsman. Ether Swordsman is going to need very good tails. First let's play Envoy of Pelargir, and then we can play not very good tails, it's going to require good harvest to play the Ether Swordsman. Now we can see what the very good tails have for us. One, two, three, four, five. Two Hunters of Lamadon, that's great. And another very good tail. One, two, three, four, five can bring out Faramir. So that's a lot of characters for turn one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just questing not to take threat here. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. For each excess point of excess damage. Discard one resource. Okay, that could stay in the staging area for the moment. Do I want to travel to one of these locations or just hold steady where we are? I think we'll just hold. And there is an Ether Swordsman. I'll go looking for... No, not going to play Heed the Dream. If I heed... Well, I do have good harvest. So I'll heed the dream. I can still get the Ether Swordsman out even if I don't find Steward of Gondor. But I do, so that's great. Pay for it with two leadership resources and then exhaust it for two on her Luin. And we'll get out the second Ether Swordsman. So while an underwater location is the active location, players cannot play attachments or allies, so I want to have a good setup before I move to my first underwater location. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go 12, four, eight, 12. When revealed, if the active location is underwater, it is not. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And we'll go ahead and engage this enemy. That's actually not voluntary. Discard an attachment. Well, rip Steward of Gondor. And then we can go one, two, three, four, five. And we're on to the next round. So that's going to be the full questing setup manipulating my resources a little bit so I can play Gathering Strength. And 
and then play Ether Swordsman and the Onphalos Herdsman. I don't have any Knights of the Swan out yet, so I still don't think I want to travel to an underwater location. There's really no reason to rush here. Once again, we'll go f now a quest for 15. Add the top location from the grotto deck to the staging area and flip that location to its underwater side. That's sixth threat. While it's active, the first treachery card revealed each round games Dune 1 and Surge. So I quested for 16, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I'm not going to move there yet. I'm not worried about the threat in the staging area. I want my nearly, at least close to full setup before I move on. And there's no reason to rush. I'm not being pressured in this one. Let's go one, two, three, and one. And we'll play the very good tail. One, two, three, four, five. Well, nothing useful there. Not much useful, I'll say. Really wanted a Knight of the Swan, but they're all on the very bottom of the deck, all three of them. So six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Quest for eighteen. It's twenty. The card is drowned dead. So it's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Engage this enemy. The attack can go on Denethor for one damage. And then I can take out this ally, this enemy, 2, 4, 5, 6. And we're on to the next round. There's the first Knight of the Swan. Move these resources over. Get out Steward of Gondor. Hanfalas Herdsman number two. Now, well, just continue waiting. 5, 10, 15, 20. Fourteen. You cannot flip the active location this round. If the active location is underwater, resolve its forced effect. If there is no underwater active location. Doomed three. Okay. Six progress. It's enough to complete the quest. But we still need three underwater locations in the victory display. So, on to the next round. There is Knight of the Swan number two. Is there one in the... Oh, there's one in the, the uh, <laughs> discard pile. So we've got a Wealth of Gondor. And the Men of the West we can use... Let's see, first we'll get out the Knight of the Swan. We will move a resource with an Aaron Rider and move one with Denethor's ability. And we'll use the Men of the West for Knight of the Swan, for Hunter of Lamadon, and don't need it for anybody else. So we can go ahead and start exploring the underwater parts now. So once again, we'll just quest for 20. And the card is going to be Submerged Dead. If the active location is underwater, it's not. 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we'll go ahead and move to Jagged Cavern. This enemy will engage, and I'll go ahead and engage the Undersea Troll as well. 
For each point of excess damage, discard one resource from one of your objective allies or heroes. Well, I don't have a lot of extra resources, so I'm not too concerned about that. We'll still put the attack on the chump blocker. If the active location is underwater, put submerged dead into play in the staging area. And I've got a lot of characters available to deal with this, so he gets put into play in the staging area. And the attack will kill the errand rider. Put the submerged dead attack on Denethor. Attacking enemy gets plus two, so that's going to kill Denethor. As usual, I don't particularly mind if Denethor dies later in the game. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five to kill the submerged dead. And need 11, four, eight, 12. So, moving on to the next round, let's see, what are the underwater effects? Can't play attachments or allies, counter cards can't be cancelled, first treachery gains doomed one and surge. If it's active at the end of the quest phase, we must discard each card in the hand. Okay, no problem. And what do we got here? If active, after explored. No problem. So we can't play this warrior of Lossernach. No problem. We want 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, at least 20. 10, 15, 20, 25, let's go. Hopefully not a treachery. It is not. So it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen progress. That will add this underwater location to the victory display. After a double sided location is explored, add the top location from the grotto deck. When faced with the option to travel, if you do not choose to travel to a location named Sharp Precipice, you must raise each player's threat by three. We will travel there. And go ahead and flip it to underwater. While it's active, deal each engaged enemy one additional shadow card. And if it's active at the end of the quest phase, then it's going to have an effect. So we'll engage both these enemies. Each going to get two shadow cards. We'll have an attack go on four long for no damage and an attack on a hunter of Lamadon. Discard an attachment. Off goes Steward of Gondor again. Attacking enemy gets plus two, so that's five to three shields. And then we can take out these enemies. No problem. And we can play Wealth Gondor. I'll transfer, restart transferring resources to Naasia. Not Captain Zaheer though. And we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25. Let's go 34. When revealed, if the active location is underwater, choose a number and raise each player's threat by that number. No more than X progress may be placed on underwater locations this phase, where X is twice the chosen number. So I have to raise threat by 8 in order to make the 16 progress that I need. Mm, I don't think I will raise threat. I'll choose the number zero. Just leave that location there. And then I have to search the encounter deck and discard pile for an enemy and add it to staging. So we'll grab a drowned dead. And we'll go ahead and engage that enemy. Gets two shadow cards. The attack will go on four long. 
discard the bottom card of your deck. If its cost is two or less, the enemy makes an additional attack. There is no card to discard. So I'm not sure what you do in that situation, but I think the enemy gets an additional attack. So we'll do that. I don't know if he gets an extra shadow card or not, but we'll do that. Attacking enemy is plus two, so it's six to three. But each of them has four HP, so... Go ahead and take out that drowned dead. And we're on to the next round. So once again, we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And the card is Great White Shark. So it's going to be 5 threat, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 progress. It's going to be location number 2. When faced with the option to travel, same thing as before, we will travel there. Flip it over, and this time it's a Jagged Cavern. And we'll engage the shark. Don't actually have a choice about that. And it's going to have six attack. So its attack's going to go on a Envoy of Pillar Gear. And I think he gets an additional attack for that. Put that on the other chump blocker. Treat this attack as if it were undefended. Well, that's a problem. But Herluin can take the six damage without dying. Then we can go, let's see, he's got plus three shields, so that's 13 he needs. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It's going to take out the great white shark. And we're on to the next round. So we'll be advancing to phase two this round. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, let's go 20. Uh, 25. So, return each other submerged dead in the encounter discard pile of the staging area. So it's going to be two others, three others. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I make twelve progress. And that is going to move us into phase two. Shrine to Morgoth becomes the active location with the grotto side face up. Cannot have attachments, cannot enter the staging area at the beginning of the quest phase. Flip it to its underwater side. What happens on the underwater side? Oh, not much. Captain Sahir flips to his enemy side, removing all tokens and makes an immediate attack against the first player. That attack will go on who will that attack go on? I guess one of the hunters of Lamadon. If the attack is un underwater, treat it as if it were undefended. It is not underwater. So it does kill the hunter of Lamadon. Remove Captain Sahir from the game. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for an undead enemy. Don't want the undersea cave troll. Just grab maybe a drowned dead. Sea scorpion, that's pretty mild. That's not undead though. I guess it's a drowned dead. So I have five attacks to deal with. That's rough. He 
any additional effects. Let's see. So I just need to clear the shrine to Morgoth. Five attacks. First one. Let's give Nasia an extra resource, so we'll go. Attack for four. It's gonna be one damage. Attack for three. No damage. Attack for three. If this active location is underwater, it is not. No damage. Attack for three. No damage. And attack for three. Put that on one of the Onphalos herdsmen. One damage. Okay, let's see what I can do in return. Two, three, six. Three, six. Three, four, five. Four, five, six. Okay, so we survive. Beginning of the quest phase. Shrine to Morgoth is going to flip. Cannot have attachments, cannot enter the staging area. It's active at the end of the quest phase. Raise progress by 5, so we need 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we'll go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. The card is a drowned dead, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 23 progress. And that is going to end the game. This is a pretty mild quest compared to some of the others in the cycle. But I do like the interesting mechanic between switching between underwater and above the water. The one attack by Captain Sahir and then he runs away is kind of funny. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, submerged dead could be quite a threat against some decks if you get all of them back at once. That is formidable. So thank you for watching.